Hello everyone and welcome to QuickMed where medicine is explained quickly and easily. In this video, we will discuss iron studies in detail, covering what they would look like in the setting of iron deficiency anemia, anemia of chronic disease or inflammatory anemia, as well as an iron overload state. If you haven't already, I recommend checking out part one of our series where we discuss each iron studies parameter in detail, because now we're going to apply this to a clinical setting. Let's start with an overview. So two major principles that you need to know when looking at iron studies is that transferrin, which we said is a transport protein, is actually inversely proportional to body iron stores. So this basically means that transferrin and ferritin, which is our storage protein, are inversely proportional. So when one goes up, the other is always going to go down. And if you think about it, this is because if iron stores are low, such as in an iron deficiency state, the body is going to try to compensate by increasing transferrin to facilitate iron absorption. And then the second principle to keep in mind is that the total iron binding capacity, or TIBC, and transferrin are essentially the same parameters. So they are going to be in the same direction when we're looking at these up and down arrows always as well. So as you'll see in the upcoming slides, we're going to group these together because it's so much easier to understand the iron studies this way. So let's start with an iron deficiency state or iron deficiency anemia. And this can occur from a variety of reasons like a decreased intake of iron, such as you would see with a vegan or vegetarian diet. Menstruation or gastrointestinal losses lead to blood or iron loss. And then conditions like celiac disease or bariatric surgery can also cause decreased absorption of iron. So iron deficiency anemia can be caused by a myriad of things. So how would this look on our lab results? So as you would expect, the iron level would be low. And because we have low iron stores, our ferritin will also be low here. As a result, our body will try to compensate for this by producing more transferrin or our transport protein. And so TIBC and transferrin levels here are going to be increased. And now when we look at transferrin saturation here, even though our transferrin levels are higher than we'd expect, they are not bound by iron as much as we'd like them to be, and so the transferrin saturation is going to be low. Let's now contrast this with inflammatory anemia because this is where a lot of confusion can occur, particularly on exam questions. So with inflammatory anemia, the iron level here is interestingly going to be low, and you might be wondering why is that? Whenever there is chronic inflammation, there's going to be an increase in levels of acute phase reactants, one of which is known as hepcidin. And hepcidin is key here because it actually causes decreased iron absorption from the gut, as well as decreasing the release of iron that are stored in macrophages. And so the iron is pretty much trapped in the macrophages, and so it looks like the iron levels are low in the bloodstream, although the iron stores are actually adequate. So in this case, our iron levels are going to be low, but the ferritin levels are going to be high because our iron is pretty much trapped in storage. And another thing to note here is that ferritin is also an acute phase reactant, just like hepcidin, and so it is going to increase when there is chronic inflammation. And because our ferritin levels are high, as we said, transferrin is going to do the complete opposite here. Our TIBC and transferrin are going to be low. And in this case, our transferrin levels are low, but they're also not saturated with iron because we have low iron, and so our transferrin saturation is going to be low as well. Let's now discuss an iron overload state, and this is something that you would see with a condition like hemochromatosis. So in this case, we're going to have a lot of iron in serum as well as in storage, and so your iron level here is going to be high, and then your ferritin level is going to be high. And as a result, because ferritin is high, our TIBC and transferrin are going to be low. But in this case, unlike with the other two conditions, our transferrin levels are low, but they're highly saturated with iron, and so your transferrin saturation is going to be high here. So let's just do a brief summary of this. Iron deficiency anemia is going to be your classic presentation where ferritin is low and transferrin is going to be high. In contrast, with inflammatory anemia, you're also going to have a low iron level, but this isn't because there isn't enough iron in the body. There's actually a lot in storage, but it's just not able to get released from that storage. So in this case, we have a high ferritin and a low transferrin. And then with an iron overload state, you're going to have high iron, high ferritin, and high transferrin saturation because you have a lot of iron both in the serum as well as in storage. All right, everyone, we hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe because it just helps us know if what we're making is actually useful and if you're benefiting from it. And as always, good luck studying, everyone.